Thank you all. I really appreciate, Ron and I do, that you all came to my southern draw. You all came to comfort us. Thank you so much. It means a lot to us. And I can't tell you how much we've been lifted up by your prayers and your comfort, your cards, your flowers, your patience, and just we know that we are loved, and we are so thankful for it. And I want to especially thank, I know some people came from out of town, and we appreciate that you made the sacrifice to be with us, and people from California, family, and Washington, and we just thank you all, you Oregonians, and uh, I want to thank Stephen's friends. Not all of them could be here, but the ones that are here are really, we're thankful that you're here to be here to comfort us and to celebrate his life with us. And I want to reassure you that I am very comforted in God's love, thanks to people like you, and thanks to Faith. And I'm very, very thankful for my son, Stephen. I'm thankful for the wonderful years, the gift, children are a gift from the Lord that the Lord gave us. He gave us great memories, and you're going to see those in the PowerPoint that has been prepared. And I just want to tell you a little bit, like when Stephen was born, my doctor, this is back in the day where you didn't know, my doctor kept convincing me that I was having a little girl because I already had a little Joshua Daniel, who's in Taiwan right now. And um, so I was going to name my little baby, Sarah Elizabeth, after my wonderful grandmother, who was the most important person in my childhood. And then we had a healthy little baby boy, and so we didn't quite have a name. So we had a couple names, but we wanted to make sure that it all went well together. So we decided, after um, not doing some names because of the initials, that we would switch it around and do, instead of A-S-S, -S, we would do S-A-S. -S. And it really kind of fits Stephen because he was a little bit of a sass at times. But <laughs> I'll tell you how I picked that name. I went through the Bible, and I was like, Joshua Daniel was our Old Testament baby. I had to have a New Testament baby, and I didn't want Stephen to feel like, well, my name didn't come from the Bible like Joshua's did. So I just opened my Bible and searched, and I thought SS was good. And I looked up specifically Acts 6, and it says that Stephen was a man full of faith and the Holy Spirit. And I thought, that's what I want my little boy to be a man full of faith and the Holy Spirit. So we named him Stephen Andrew Smith. And I thought it was significant, and I was a little concerned because if any of you know the Stephen in the Bible, he was a great man and a good leader, but he had a short life. And he died a tragic death. And when he died, he said, he cried out with a, Lord, a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. And having said this, he fell asleep. He, but he gave his spirit to the Lord, and that's my prayer, that Stephen gave his spirit to the Lord. And that the Lord will receive his spirit, because we trust him, and we know that he's compassionate and merciful. And we know that Stephen did fall asleep, but it was peaceful. And we know, too, that Jesus said on the cross when he was dying, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And so I forgive anybody that could have contributed to Stephen's addiction or death because that's what God would want me to do and I hold no bitterness and I am thankful that no one will hold bitterness either for some of the things that Stephen did because we all have sinned and fallen short of God's glory but I find many many sto stories and words of comfort that comfort me in my grief and they guide us every day in our daily experience and there is one thing that I know for sure, and that is that we have a loving, compassionate, merciful Father God. And our son suffered. He suffered a very painful several last years. He had emotional and mental distress. He had chronic physical pain. He had horrible withdrawals. He got addicted to pain medication because of an accident. And he made a lot of bad choices and substance abuse did kill him. But Stephen cried out daily about his condition, and he shared over and over again with me his desire to end his life multiple times. And Ron and I, we did everything we could as parents, 
everything we could to get him help. And it's not easy. It's not easy when you cry out for help to get it. It's complicated. It's expensive. It's not readily available. There's waiting lists. But Stephen did go to rehab several times, and he just got to the point where he didn't want to live like this anymore. He felt he was defective. He didn't have any hope. And God understands and God receives the brokenhearted. I myself grew up with alcoholism and addiction in my family, and I've already lost over a dozen family members to tragic deaths. But thankfully, in my early 20s, I found God. And when I found God, I found a new way of living. And we gave our children the best we knew how, that faith, that unconditional love. And we tried in every way to say, we love you, and we want the best for you, and we encouraged and nourished that. But I just want to share with you, just to understand a little bit of Stephen's heart. This was a psalm. Stephen and I both loved the psalms. And this was a psalm and a prayer that Stephen and I shared often. His favorite was Psalm 23, but this was a psalm that Stephen and I prayed. How long, oh, how long will you forget me, O Lord, forever? How long will you hide from me? How long must I worry and feel sad in my heart all day? How long will my enemy win over me? And Stephen's enemy was addiction. He struggled with emotional anguish, guilt, shame, and slavery to the withdrawal symptoms. Although he suffered physically, it was the emotional pain that was the most difficult to bear. And he hated that struggle, and he didn't want to hurt us. But the psalm doesn't end there. It concludes, but we trust in your mercy, and our hearts rejoice in your salvation. In our grief, we trust in God. Yes, we do know, we believe that God loves us. And in the book of Lamentations, chapter 332, it says, Though God allows grief, he also shows compassion because of his great unfailing love. We are comforted by God's love. We are comforted by his words. We are comforted by each one of you here. Thank you so much. And this is the only way that we can get through the sorrow and suffering in the world. But we know that this is not the end. And recently, a good friend, I have a prayer partner. We've been praying for 10 years together every Monday morning. So if you can't get me, and if you don't see me at the pool, it's because I'm praying with my friend. But this is a scripture that she shared that really helped me. 1 Peter 5, 6 and 7. So humble yourself under God's strong hand. And in, own, in his own good time, he will lift you up. You can throw the whole weight of all your anxieties upon him. Another version says, cast all your cares upon him, for, you, for he cares for you. You and I are his personal concern. So my first step is humility and honest. And I admit, I'm a mess. I need help. And Ron and I do plan to go to grief support. Right now, my life is unmanageable in this grief. But the second step in the 12 steps is to let go and let God take care of me and Ron. So during this time of grief, we trust God. Stephen finally has an end to his suffering. Stephen will be able to sleep this disease off. It's a very, very long sleep from our perspective. But from God's perspective, it's only a moment of peaceful sleep. And we will wait for the great resurrection and our heavenly reunion and all of us, all of us want to be there for that great reunion and that great heavenly banquet. And so we say, come, Lord Jesus, come, come soon.